Hello and welcome to New Forest Morphs and a big welcome to Mandy who's our camera lady today. Thank you Mandy for joining us mm -hmm. and also just a big thank you to uh, Predator BP for doing that uh, beautiful video together we did this week um, which we featured uh, the introduction to our collection and I'm so grateful for all the love and support and all you guys that have come over and uh, joined our um, channel and subscribed to our channel. It's a big thumbs up from myself. And um, today we're going to be talking about the leopard gene, which is one of my favourite genes as well. And um, I've got a couple of leopard combos with me at the moment. I think you've met Mowgli. If you watched the, the last film we did uh, with Predator BP, you would have seen Mowgli featuring on there. And it inspired me to do a, uh, a leopard gene film today. And uh, this guy here, I forgot to mention, he's got pastel in him. So I, I did describe him as a leopard. 100% um, uh, clown, 50% pied, but also he's got pastel. And if you see the pastel in the jeans, it really makes the animal pop. Isn't he beautiful? So there's Mowgli, and I love him a lot. He's uh, putting on some size, he's now in our breeding rotation. He has locked up to um, our clown 100% pied pastel, and uh, She's in shed at the moment, so I'm hoping we're going to get a second lock later in the month when she's out of shed. And if you're wondering what the other snake is on my neck at the moment, this is Daisy, who's one of my first ever leopards that I bought. And I got this beautiful leopard with Emily. We went up to see um, Kyron from uh, Wheelie Good Balls, and he's based the other side of Southampton. Really nice guy, very, very genuine, and uh, his partner. They're lovely people. Um, so I'd like to thank Kyron for getting us into the leopard gene. And you can see that Daisy has grown a lot. I bought uh, Daisy about 18 months ago from Chiron and Emily chose um, the snake and she's put on about, well I think we bought her at 450 grams and now you can see that she's around about 1800 to 2000 grams and she's in our first year of breeding. <clears throat> We're hoping that she's going to produce some, uh, we put Cookie to her, so Cookie is a pied, she's 50% het pied, we're going to try and prove her out. And so if she produce leopard albino, she's a leopard albino, 50% het pied. She could produce leopard albino pieds, which would be absolutely awesome. It looks like Mowgli's showing an interest in her as well, look. <laughs> it must be the leopard gene attracting each other. So leopard is a very, very, very beautiful gene. It's a dominant gene, um, which is slightly different to a co-dominant gene. So Mandy, you've done biology. Have you ever studied do dominant, dominant and co-dominant genes? No? Okay. Well, I'll try and explain the difference. I mean, um, a dominant gene has got the name dominant because it dominates. So when you put a leopard with any other gene, the um, colours and the patterns in the leopard normally manifest themselves very strongly in the next offspring. But it depends on what you put it with. If you put a leopard with a champagne, and a champagne is known to have very little pattern, a leopard will do amazing things with champagne. It will restore pattern to it. Um, the same with the lesser. The lesser washes out pattern, but you put a leopard to a lesser, and that is incredible. And I'll try and put up a few pictures for you so you can see what I mean. Um, but they are beautiful. So the leopard is a very powerful gene because it restores wacky pattern into the offspring. But also when it's combined with other animals, it can actually reduce the pattern. So I think it's an incredibly flexible gene. Now you can see, you can probably notice that Mowgli's got on my, it's got on my sleeve here, you see? <laughs> he's obviously decided to go into hiding. <laughs> uh, just as well I trust these animals, but uh, he's, he's got up my sleeve, if you can see there. And um, Daisy's enjoying being out. They love this, and I love spending time with them to ask you. So every video we do, I think we're going to bring out some of our snakes. Now you'll notice that Mowgli's got his head halfway up the top. So I think I might have just to pull him out a second. But let's just study the um, the uh, the patterns on a on a uh, on a leopard, and I think Mowgli is an excellent example of this. And so let's um, just see if Daisy will come back up a bit higher. There we go. She wants to interact with Mowgli. I can see that. Right, if you stay up there, darling. That's it. There we go. Right, Mandy, come in close at the top of the snake, and then you can see the patterns that we've got here. 
So first of all, can you notice the head stamp of the leopard? Just zoom in on the head stamp. Can you see the head stamp there? It's got unique markings. I think it's beautiful. Now the pastel's washing it out slightly, but if you look very, very carefully at the head stamp, he's got that lovely banding either side. It's almost like an upside down A with bands down the middle. I love it. The other thing that the leopard has, it has what they call a neck stripe. So if I show you his neck stripe, look at that. See the neck stripe? And then if you look at his body pattern, look at these random circles on the pattern. And that's why it's called leopard, because it looks like a leopard that you'd get in, in, uh, on safari. And a lot of women love leopard handbags, they love leopard clothing. So I think the leopard gene is a real winner for both male and female um, humans because of their wonderful patty colours. And I see he wants to come and say hello to you, Mandy. <laughs> He's checking out the camera. I love him a lot. Now let's look at his tummy. So have a quick look at his tummy, Mandy. Can you see there's some checkered patterns going on in there? Now if you didn't have the pastel, you'd find there'd be more checkered patterns on the tummy, but the pastel seems to wash that out a little bit, remove some of the pattern, but there is pattern in, in its tummy. And the other thing you've got here is just look at the tail. Can you see that you've got a separate tail pattern from the leopard? Can you see at the tail? He's got like a dorsal. Can you see that? And obviously, to see whether he's um, a hundred, well, we know he's 50% het pied. He's 100% clown, but he's 50% het pied. We could also try and check some markings on him to see whether he's got the pied markings. Now, I'm just gonna, just bear with me. <laughs> Working with animals is fun because they've got their own nature, they've got their own. I'm just gonna try and get Daisy back onto my shoulders. She wants to go out and explore me, but you can see how beautiful she is. And we'll just put her on my neck. There we go. Thank you, Mandy. So let's see whether we can check out any of his pied markings. So has he got any tracks at the bottom of his tail? I would say yes, look at those tracks. You see the little tracks on the tail? There, on either side? If he had a ringer as well, that would be a good indicator. I can't see a ringer on there, but it doesn't mean to say that he won't prove to be 100% pied, but I'm hoping he will be because we're shooting for the Batman Pieds and he's going to form a building block for that project. So there we go, there you can see the wacky pattern, you can see the beautiful leopard colours, you've got deep blacks and lovely golden undertones and look at the fading on the tail, look at the, look at the fading at the bottom of the animal. Can you see those lovely yellows building up? I think it's a wonderful gene and I'd highly recommend it to anyone that's thinking about getting into ball pythons because what it does to other combos is incredible. And later on the video I'm going to show you some combinations that we're going to be plugging in and aiming for um, as part of our project here at New Forest Morphs. So when did the leopard gene first um, was first produced? Well, it was first produced, it's got a really interesting backstory. Here. There's a guy called Peter Cowell. Uh, who has a company called Peter Carr Reptiles. He imported some examples from Ghana of um, unusual looking normals that were carrying the deep blacks and these gold colours in the genes. And he had a couple of animals that he bred together. And at first, I think he thought they were het for pied. He had no idea that leopard was its own standalone gene. So he was introducing these normals to his pied collection to try and see how it would interlink with the pied gene. And he was convinced in the early stages, as well as many other breeders, that the leopard gene was actually het for pied and that there was a direct link. And it wasn't until 2005 that we got another breeder and the breeder who um, did some tests to see whether or not it was a standalone gene or not was a guy called Greg uh, Craziani from the US and he did an experiment. He actually took, a, he bred a spider pied bull, which was produced from two um, leopard parents. And he put that to three females and they produced 23 eggs. And of those 23 eggs, none of them, no, no, no leopards were produced at all. Now you would have thought having 
um, produced no leopards, that must have proven that the gene itself was not hetropied because it didn't produce any leopards at all. And that was then backed up again by uh, Marcus Jane, who bred a super leopard. Now again, there's a big question mark in the industry as to whether or not you can produce a super leopard. I think they've proven that you can. Um, so Marcus Jane bred a super leopard and he found that of all, all the eggs, none of them didn't have any pied genes at all in them at all. Now had they been het for pied, he would have expected some pieds to have come out on his collection, but they never did. So there was a second reason why they believed that there was a mistake of thinking that the leopard was directly linked to the pied gene. And they're often called het pieds, but it's absolutely not the case. And that's now been proven. Justin Kabelka has put out a video recently, I think it was 2017, where he contrasts some of his collection to show that the super le leopard does actually exist. Because with a recessive gene, you can't produce a super. But with a co-dominant gene, you can produce supers. So it's well worth, I'll probably put the link to Justin's video on, on my video so you can have a look at that. And he does a really interesting contrast between leopards and super leopards and what are some of the things that stand out. Okay. So let's now look at um, some of the different combinations. And I think what I'll do to guide me is I'll put Mowgli back into his rub and then we'll just have a little look at Daisy. And then we'll perhaps have a look at him in the light box first, Manny. Do you want to go down to the light box? Right, they gave him in a little ball. There you go, Manny. Do you want to have a look at him in the light box? And zoom in on him. Yeah, there's Mowgli for you. Isn't he beautiful? Just look at those patterns. They seriously pop. Aren't they gorgeous? Now he's behaving himself really, really well. And you can see what I'm talking about in wacky patterns. Beautiful wacky patterns. Absolutely gorgeous. And then I think we'll put Daisy in there as well, see if she'll behave. I'll pass the camera over to you, Mandy. I'll just slip him back. <laughs> so let's put Mowgli back into his rock. There you go, Mowgli. Back you go. And then we'll have a look at Daisy in and outside the light box. Now you can see Mandy, if you just home in on her, what she's doing to me. Now what's really good exercise for um, the, um, what's really good exercise for the snakes is for them to come out and play with us. And you can see that because they're constrictors, when they get part of your body, they want to constrict what you're doing. And you can see she's trying to constrict me at the moment. Now I wouldn't allow um, a snake of this size to be with a child just for safety because they could do some damage. But obviously she's pulling it on my neck and it, it's actually quite soothing it feels like a massage it's not actually giving me any issues um, I'm strong enough with and this is the nice thing about ball pythons because if a ball python starts to constrict you like this one's doing you can take your hands and you can actually separate you've got the strength to do it now if you had a really big ball python or another gene of uh, python that's much bigger that would be dangerous and that's why they always say on some of the larger pythons always have a second person standing by just in case they decide to constrict you um, but with ball pythons for adults it's safe. For children it's obviously you need to be guided by your parent by the parents need to be there. But she's giving me a neck massage, which I'm quite enjoying to be honest with you. But she's enjoying it as well because they're built up with so many muscles, they want to exercise themselves. So she's using my body as her gym and she's going on there, she's realizing I want to constrict, I wanna I wanna exercise, I wanna get out, I wanna have freedom and you know. Uh, it's good for them to be able to get out there and do these things. But let's now look at Daisy in the light box and we'll just see how she's looking. So now I'm going to show you, <laughs> I've got to try and separate her from my neck now. Now look, as I try and separate, she squeezes even more here. I can't see where her tail is, I'm feeling for her tail. Just take her tail, it's okay Mandy, just keep an eye on me, I'm just showing people how to do this. Take the tail and just gently unravel the snake so that if you do find it's getting too tight, don't have to panic. You just have to gently unwind them 
and there you have you know how docile they are now she's still got her neck around my neck and now I've separated her off me now she's enjoyed spending that time with me and now she still wants to look she still wants to hug me she still wants to constrict me and she's constricting my arm now but you can see in the natural light how beautiful she is I mean we fell in love with her just look at the colors so the leopard mixed in with the albino and she's 50% het pied I really do hope she proves out to be 100% pied it would be wonderful if she does but if not the babies will be and we'll just take it to the next generation you can see those lovely colors Mandy she's got a lovely docile Emily's been spending a lot of time with her as a sub-adult and that's why she's so docile but look at the red eyes and how the leopard interplays with the albino now the albino is known to be a very strong gene um, to get leopard in there leopard actually has an impact on her because leopard is such a dominant gene that it even tries to change what's going on with the albino and the albino is an incredibly strong gene you see what it's doing it's putting out much longer patterns and you see this, the crazy um, circles now it's really into, into playing nicely with the albino and that's why we like it and if you look at her tummy I think her tummy is has her tummy white Mandy can you see anything on her tummy are there any patterns on the tummy there no so if I have a look at it I can see pattern on that tummy so she's got the leopard patterning on the tummy as well so I think she's beautiful let's put her in the light box and let's see what she looks like see whether she'll sit nicely for us you pass me the camera Mandy I'll just try and get some footage now she's just shed today so you're seeing her at her best which I think she looks beautiful just look at that what do you think lovely animal really really beautiful and she's sitting nicely for us for an adult half the time you find a lot of these snakes will <laughs> um, move around but if I just twist her now and see if I can get her to twist into a nice circle for us she might just go into a ball for us which would be lovely there we go and then we can see her face and we can see her head and there she is beautiful there we go let's just study her patterns lovely really beautiful there she goes tremendous animal right back to you Mandy if you want to take the camera <coughs> so thank you Daisy for being such a well behaved adult in the light box Jared will be pleased that you haven't wrecked his box not most of the adults wreck his box but you can see Daisy's really really good at behaving <laughs> she's beautiful and we're hoping that she's going to give us a clutch this year so she's had four locks with Cookie, uh, Cookie uh, and I'll show you the husband that we put her to and he's beautiful so Cookie's in here, he's in shed at the moment so he's just not looking at his best and there's her husband, 100% pied obviously because he's a visual pied but he's 50% het for toffee and he's 100% het for albino so he will produce some visual albinos and hopefully the leopard will go into those and if she proves to be pied we could end up with albino pied leopards which would be fantastic right let's slip her back now her home is just over here Daisy and I can show you a little technique for checking the egg growth development so if you can't afford an ultrasound, an ultrasound or you don't want an ultrasound when you return a female that's starting to build follicles now follicles are the small eggs that develop inside a female's um, internal system and they grow as they're stimulated with age and growth they grow over time and when you return an animal you try to put the head in first like this and let her find her own way she'll be smelling her own room you put your thumb and finger on the body and slight gentle squeezing you can feel, I can feel right now I can feel one two three four five little follicles possibly six there and gives you an idea that she's building for hopefully this season and that's called 
pulsating and it's a very easy way I say easy it's not easy but it's a clever way of gauging how many eggs are growing in your female without having to spend two or three thousand pounds on a machine that will give you that information and it's actually quite fun it's a technique that Emily taught me she did the first pulpating up in her bedroom last year and she managed to palpate the eggs in our panda girl that produced those four babies for us and she used her thing, finger and thumb thing Jared taught her how to do it um, but there are plenty of videos out there please have a look at them if you want to learn how to check the eggs in your female safely without over squeezing it's just a gentle pressure and you can feel those little uh, follicles so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a couple of other um, leopards in our collection and I think the next leopard that I was going to show you is um, Hercules. I know he featured on the um, last video, but I'll just bring him out because he does have leopard in him. Um, and he's a five gene clown. Come on, Hercules. So I'm now going to show you what leopard does to um, clown. Now, in this particular case, if you look at Justin Kabalka's videos, he reckons the super form of leopard helps to produce a complete dorsal stripe all the way down the clown. Now, this one does have a complete dorsal stripe. Doesn't guarantee that it's a super leopard, but if it is, <laughs> I'm gonna be even happier, because not only is it carrying lesser pastel and enchi, if that carries super leopard, that is gonna be awesome. It will guarantee leopard into every future offspring because having a super leopard means that you're guaranteed to have uh, a leopard in the offspring. Although there is debate about this because if leopard is a dominant gene rather than co-dominant gene, they reckon that if you had two versions of a super in a dominant gene, that you'd only produce 75% chance of producing leopard in the offspring. And again, it's quite complex, but <laughs> it's, um, some people say that if you've got a dominant gene, you can't produce a super, but I've been studying it and looking at it and. There's lots of arguments that say that what they call a super form leopard could actually produce 75% of the offspring being leopards. So it'd be interesting to see when we use him as a stud, how many leopards he produces, and that might help us determine whether he's a super leopard or whether he's carrying the single gene. And I will speak to the breeder to make sure and find out the parents in case both parents were leopards, uh, or if there's only a single leopard in the mix, then it's probably just a single leopard. But it's interesting. And you can see the impact that leopard has. Can you see that the alien heads have been faded out, very small dots that you get on the leopard. Can you see, you can still see the leopard markings, but the less has washed those out. But if you see a, a leopard clown, you'll be able to see the full visual effect of the leopard. And um, we don't have a leopard clown as two single genes. And if you put a leopard spot nose into the mix, you produce what they call a Batman, is what we are aiming for here, because we've got spot nose. And I'll just show you what spot nose looks like. We've got a female spot nose down here that she's gonna come into the projects. Her name's Lexi. She's in shed at the moment. But can you see how dark she is? That scatty pattern and the dark pattern, and look at the dorsal. We've got a complete dorsal on there. Now, if you end up putting him and her together, and he's got a complete dorsal. And if he's a super leopard, we're going to get a very dark, contrasted snake that's going to produce a wicked looking Batman. And then you put in yellow belly and you put in red stripe, then you can end up with some incredible combinations. And I'll put up a couple of um, possible combos going forward of what we can try and hit, mm. uh, which I think are beautiful. But there's Hercules. I'll just slip him back. And there's one final snake I want to show you. Now, this is a female, and I think we'll show her in the light box because she's so beautiful. And again, she's just shed this week. She hasn't got a name, but she's got leopard in her. There she is. She's just shed out, and we got this from Mike at Rattlesnacks Limited about six weeks to two months ago. She's come out of quarantine now. She's looking really good and healthy. She's put on more weight. She's carrying yellow belly, orange dream, leopard, and she is 100% het for clown. And she will be a very, very important part of our breeding project going forward. I just love what leopard 
Orange Dream and Yellow Belly do. Look at the combination, everything just pops. And it's, I think it's got pastel as well. So pastel's in there as well. So there's pastel, Orange Dream, Yellow Belly, 100% Heck Clown. And let's have a look her in the light box. Pass me the cameraman. Just look at that. Beautiful. The orange dream. You can see the orange and the yellow belly. Look at the colours coming up. And how they contrast. You've got the brightness of the orange dream and yellow belly. And look at the deep blacks and the leopard. Plus you've got that 100% head clown in there as well. I think that is gorgeous. And I'm going to try and just turn her around. See if she'll come and have a look at us. Let's look at her head stamp as well. Here she comes. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Just look at that. Oh, so crisp and so clean. And see the pastel blushes out the head stamp. As you can see, you can see how that blushes out, which would normally be much darker. And then you've got that lovely coloured eye because of the pastel that brings in the green eye, can you see that lovely green eye? And look at the headband, stripe down the side. I just love the way that contrasts. So you've got your bright orange and yellows feeding into the pastel. There's three brightening jeans contrasting with the black leopard. And look at the way the pattern is all over the shop. I mean, that's what I like about leopard. It creates such a wavy, crazy pattern in combos. Now imagine if we put spot nose into that it just gets even crazier and then the clown oh it's going to be wonderful can't wait to prove this girl out and see what she produces she's weighing in about 300 grams at the moment which is really good because she's a hatchling from this year and we'd like to thank mike for providing such a wonderful high-end snake for us really really gorgeous right back to you mandy Isn't she lovely? Now we don't have a name for her, so I'm going to ask our viewers to see if you can come up with a name for this beautiful girl. Now there's an example of the checkered patterns on the leopard. Can you see? That's what I was trying to show on the other animals. This is showing it really, really well. Can you see that checkered pattern? That's what the leopard does. And of course there's yellow belly in there as well. So you get yellow belly plus leopard. You're going to get body checking inside underneath her tummy. And I think she's an absolutely superb looking snake. And she's enjoying spending some time with us as well. So, yeah, any names that anyone can think about there on this girl, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And we'll consider the different names. And we'll just slip her back now. Right, thank you, Mandy. But just to wrap up, what we're going to do is just finish on the genetics and um, let's just go back and do that at the table because I've got a few notes. I just wanted to cover a few more genetics and do a shout out because we've had some stickers um, given to us by some really kind breeders and we are doing sticker swaps and exchanges at the moment. So if you've got any stickers out there you want to do a swap, drop us a, a message either on Facebook, uh, Jared's running an Instagram with New Forest Morphs and that's a good place to drop in a, a your address privately will keep that confidential. Um, but this is the sticker that came in this morning, Kurtwood75 on Instagram. And I think he's got um, a beautiful sticker there. And he sent us three of those. So we're gonna put one on the sticker board, one on the fridge magnet, and then we'll probably put one on the um, incub one of the incubators. So big thank you to him. And also we've had a couple of other new stickers while we're on stickers, Mandy. There's a couple more over here, if I can just give a shout out so Ridgeway sent a lovely sticker now we've got a lot of time for Ridgeway Simon there who's fantastic he's running such a great business there he supplies us with so many wonderful rodents through his company he also supplies us with the rubs and the racking systems for our system and he also supplies high-end high quality snakes go, go go give them a look out give them a shout out go check them out on their website they're on morph market 
We've also got, as I just say, Kurtwood. Hi there, sorry, we just lost battery power. So Mandy's back on it again. So let's just go through um, the cost and affordability of this particular gene. We were just talking about um, genetics and how the leopard has such a big impact on other strong genes, like we were talking about the pin being dominant, but the leopard can make an impact. Champagne virtually has no pattern. You put leopard in there, create pattern. Lesser we spoke about. So I think the power of this gene it is a pattern changer, whether you want to restore pattern or whether you want to reduce pattern, depending on how you mix them. So that's why it's so popular. And also it's great for contrasting. So people are like on the dark side of the hobby. The darkness of the leopard allows you to do contrasting. So when you introduce some brighter colors, the leopard acts as a really good contrast. So I think that's really good too. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can actually have some lines of darker than others, some are lighter. Uh, it clean, it's a cleansing gene, so it can clean. It has wacky patterns, it has random circles, it has um, belly pattern, it has tail marks and neck marks. So there's a lot going on with this particular gene. Um, the other thing this is interesting is that um, it jumbles up the pattern as well. So you get a jumbled up pattern, mixed pattern. So the leopard pastel we saw in Mowgli, you can see how bright and the contrast is really good. Um, another thing that you can add to leopard is the fire leopard. So if you look at fire leopards, they are beautiful and I'll put a picture of one up for you. And the contrast between fire and leopard is amazing. It gives a really good definition between the light and the dark, high contrast. So when you start putting in Enchi fire pastel, leopard just pops. Mojave leopards are beautiful, that scrambles up the pattern and you get a lovely combination between the leopard and the Mojave gene mixing together. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if you were to buy a spot nose leopard, you'd probably spend about a thousand pounds. But a basic affordable entry level for the leopard is about 200, uh, 100 pounds. You can get a leopard for 100 pounds, uh, which I think is really good. And obviously with shipping, that'll probably go to about 150 pounds. But then if you start adding combos, the price starts to accumulate. Like I said, a spot nose leopard could be as much as 800 to a thousand pounds. And then if you want to go from spot nose leopard to a Batman, you basically introduce the clown gene. So spot nose, leopard, clown is the Batman. And the Batmans go between two, two and a half to three thousand pounds, depending on the quality and the breed of behind it. So, you know, you'll pay a lot of money for a Batman. And then the Batman, you can add other genes like banana to get the Gotham. You can add uh, other genes, which is Justin Kabelka. If you look at some of his videos, he's got some amazing combinations where he's putting in yellow belly, red stripe, spot nose, clown mixed in with leopard and produces some incredible incredible snakes and uh, i'll put a few examples up on them there so you can see what can be achieved and some of those go for between six thousand and ten thousand dollars so you can see you start off with a 200 pound 300 pound snake you layer up the genes and you can convert a small pool of genes over five or six years into an animal that could be worth three to four to five to even ten thousand pounds or dollars so you can see that by mixing and laying correctly, you enhance the value of your collection, which then that money can feed back into your hobby to allow you to heat, feed, build your projects, invest in new genes, and you can just roll it forward. So this, the nice thing about the hobby is if you can work out, and Jad and I are trying to do this, we've gone through Morph Market and we're trying to see the genes that we like and how much they buy and sell for. And we're trying to work out the best, most productive, cost-effective way of combining genes, and then to take those genes and make them into high-end genes that we can then sell to reinvest into our hobby. And I think it's worth doing that exercise because you might have a limited budget, but you want to aim for certain goals that allow you to expand your um, number of snakes, to, to pay for your facility, to pay for the animals. If you've got a collection of 100 animals, it can cost over 100 pounds uh, a week to feed those. So that's only £5,000 a year. Now you've got to think about that and think, if I had that many snakes, I've got to make sure that my surplus snakes have got to generate enough income to pay for the food, to pay for the cleaning, to pay for the heating, to pay for running that facility. So it's really important that you do spend time looking at how to use the genes most effectively to help pay for your hobby. And we can discuss that in more detail in another video. So what other beautiful combinations have we got? Well, we've got the butter leopard is a beautiful combination. I'll show you one of those. 
you've got the um, leopard champagne I think I've mentioned that the albino leopard you've seen Daisy how beautiful she is I think that's a lovely combination and then you start to move into the high-end snakes like Hercules he's a five gene leopard then you've got the exantic leopards they are beautiful we've got the exantics if you do exantic leopard fire pastel they're awesome I'll show you what they look like then you can add the pied and you can end up with exantic leopard uh, pastel pieds that'd be absolutely amazing the thing that people do is they introduce the leopard into their highway projects so when you're producing highways you introduce leopard it's amazing what it does and I'll show you a few examples of that put banana into leopard beautiful banana leopard clowns beautiful and orange dream yellow belly and we spoke about the batmans the gothams and all the other potential there are, there's just so much potential with leopard so I think our goal is to produce a batman pied it's going to take us three to five years to achieve that hopefully we'll get there but um, there's just a few ideas and a few examples of what we can do with a leopard gene and we're really grateful to have leopard in our collection and uh, we're looking forward to trying to produce some of these beautiful snakes going forwards. So it's a big thank you to Mandy for joining us today and being our camera lady. Thank you, Mandy. A big thank you for our viewers being there and uh, giving us the love and support. And we wish you all the best for the end of 2020 and uh, we shall catch up with you soon. So it's goodbye for me. My name is Paul at New Forest Morphs. Bye bye for now.